This is the second lecture concerning a classical theory of elementary spinning particles. In this lecture we are going to analyze a mathematical property of the Lagrangian which describes elementary particles. This homogeneity is general for any arbitrary mechanical system such that the Lagrangian, when written in terms of the kinematical variables and their first order derivatives with respect to some arbitrary evolution parameter, it is always to be a homogeneous function. Now remember that the most general representation of a classical elementary particle is this one. It is characterized by a point R, which represents the location of the particle, and also by the orientation of a co-moving Cartesian frame linked uh, to that point. Now, the, the kinematical variables, that is, the, the boundary variables for their variational description, are this time, position, velocity of that point, and orientation of that Cartesian frame, so that the Lagrangian is a function of time, position, velocity of that point, acceleration of that point, orientation of the system, and the time derivative for the orientation, the angular velocity. Now, because of this dependence of the Lagrangian on the acceleration of the point R, point R satisfies fourth order differential equations, while the orientation of the system, the usual second order Euler's equations for the rotation of the bodies. Now, you see that this is the most general Lagrangian for a classical elementary particle. Now, with this idea, what we have is that it has been the kinematical group associated to the restricted relativity principle, which has defined this uh, group, the maximum number of variables of the kinematical space. Because the kinematical space has to be always a homogeneous space of the kinematical group associated to the class of inertial observers. Well, with this idea in mind, the point particle, which has as kinematical variables time and position, of course it is an elementary particle according to the definition, but the problem is that it has no spin. In nature there are no spinless elementary particles, so that this model is, is a very restricted model. In fact, this homogeneous space, I mean, given T1 and R1 and T2 and R2, are related just by space-time translations of either the Galileo or the Poincaré group. But this manifold, this space-time manifold, is the homogeneous, the largest homogeneous space if the kinematical group were the space-time translation group. Now, let us consider that the, we restrict physics to the class of inertial observers, which all of them are at rest, and where the corresponding Cartesian frames parallel to each other. The largest homogeneous space of the space-time translation group is space-time. So, the most complex elementary particle with this group we can describe is the, is, is the spinless point particle. It is when we allow according to the isotropy of space that different initial observers can take arbitrary orientations, that we are allowed to, to obtain some extra orientation variables for describing larger homogeneous spaces. And finally, the law of inertia, which allows us also to describe relative velocities among inertial observers, which adds three new kinematical variables to our possible kinematical space, and therefore our most general Lagrangian will have this form. Now, our formalism, the usual formalism for describing the variational description, is written in terms of the Lagrangian integrated along time. The time measurements are always relative to some particular inertial observer. So, if we want to make a formalism independent of the observer, we are going to transform this time integral 
into some integral in terms of some arbitrary evolution parameter tau. And we assume that this parameter will be the same for every inertial observer. Later, we shall assume that this arbitrary invariant parameter is dimensionless and will give us some additional information. Then, we assume that the whole evolution is expressed in parametric form so that all kinematical variables will be functions of this arbitrary evolution parameter and there are two derivatives also will be functions of this arbitrary evolution parameters and we represent the two derivative with a dot over each of these kinematical variables. Now this allows us to write the Lagrangian in terms of the kinematical variables and their first two derivatives. For instance, if we have our more general Lagrangian for an elementary particle, the velocity is written as the r dot over t dot. Tau derivative of r divided by time, tau derivatives of time, similarly the acceleration and similarly the angular velocity. So that in this way, the Lagrangian which we still we don't know what is its structure, is the function of the kinematical variables and of all tau derivatives of all kinematical variables. Here we have all tau derivatives. But by construction we see that this is a homogeneous function of zero degree of all the variables x dot, because it is a quotient of every pair of these variables. Now, let's go to the variational formulation. And in the variational formulation, the action is the time integral, is the Lagrangian times dt. And it is dt, which we are going to express in terms of some arbitrary evolution parameter tau. So this dt is t dot d tau. And we embody this t dot into a new Lagrangian written now the variational formulation in terms of some arbitrary evolution parameter. But now the, the inclusion of this t dot makes that L tilde, the new Lagrangian in this parametric description, is a homogeneous function of degree one of the derivatives of all kinematical variables. This is completely general for any arbitrary mechanical system, in particular for an elementary particle because the kinematical variables are 10 variables at most, we take L is equals to the partial derivative of L with respect to each one of these variables times that of these variables. Well, this allows us that in any case, the Lagrangian can also be written as a sum of as many terms as kinematical variables where we have used the index zero for time, the first three for R, and so on. Now, you can see that these functions are homogeneous functions of zero degree, but we have as many terms as kinematical variables. But even more, if the evolution parameter is dimensionless, L tilde has dimensions of action. So each one of these terms has dimensions of action and therefore each still unknown function fi, which is a homogeneous function of zero degree of the tau derivatives, has the complementary dimension with respect to action of the corresponding uh, uh, kinematical variable accompanying to it. Now our most general Lagrangian for an elementary particle will be written in this form, where this sum has been explicitly written in terms of the kinematical variables of our uh, general elementary particle. But, you see, because if the parameter tau is dimensionless, t, t dot, will have dimensions of action, this has dimension of time, so capital T will have dimensions of energy, capital R will have dimensions of linear momentum, capital U dimensions of kinematical momentum, and because alpha is dimensionless, V will have dimensions 
of angular momentum of action. Now, with this description, we have any Lagrangian of any arbitrary system, and in particular for an elementary particle, written in as many terms as kinematical variables, and their accompanying capital letter observables have some dimensions and suggest that they should be related to the corresponding uh, observable properties of the mechanical system. Now, we are going to change alpha dot in terms of omega because these partial derivatives are known, but omega is a linear function of alpha dot. And the Cartesian components of omega are independent of the kind of parametrization we use to describe the orientation of the Cartesian frames. Even it is independent of whether we, we associate some initial or arbitrary uh, frame attached to that point. And therefore, this pseudo vector omega will give rise to another pseudo vector w defining this form, but the three Cartesian components will be very well defined independently of the arbitrary initial orientation of the system. Now, you see, it is the last two terms which distinguish this general elementary particle from the point particle, because for the point particle the only kinematical variables are time and position, so that it will be the functions capital U and, capital and W which will give rise to the spin of the system. They will contribute to the angular momentum of the particle. Now, if we know how the different kinematical variables transform among inertial observers, this is the transformation between two inertial observers, because two parameters invariant by taking the two derivative of these expressions, we get how for every pair of inertial observers relate their measurements of the two derivatives of all the kinematical variables. In particular, under the Poincaré group, the Lagrangian is going to be an invariant function and therefore, if we know how the t dot, r dot, u dot, and omega transform, we will get information how these observables transform between arbitrary transformations in, in between initial observers, and therefore they will give us information about their structure. Now, to final, uh, to, 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 to finish this thing, we shall see this homogeneity. For instance, we consider it the non-relativistic free-point particle, the usual Galilei-Lagrangian is this one, but in the parametric description, the L0 tilde will be this L0 t dot. This is a quotient of R dot over t dot square times t dot. We'll get this Lagrangian, which is clearly in the numerator, we have a second degree polynomial in the R dots divided by t dot. This quotient is a homogeneous function of first degree of the all kinematical variables where the capital T is this one and in fact has dimensions of energy and capital T is minus the energy of the system and the Ri are the components of the linear momentum. Now we see that L0 tilde is a homogeneous function of first degree of the corresponding observables accompanying these derivatives have the dimensions we mentioned. Even the relativistic frame three-point particle, this is a free Lagrangian, these are the kinematical variables, and in the parametric de description, this Lagrangian will be this, introducing this t dot inside this square root, will make you that this Lagrangian is the square root of a second degree polynomial in the derivatives of all kinematical variables, so that this allows us to write this Lagrangian in this form. Well, in fact, in the same as in the non relativistic case, capital T is minus the energy, and Ri are the components of the linear momentum. Now, all this formalism and this homogeneity is described in this monography. 
where we have described the general theory of elementary spinning particles. You can also get these two documents of a lecture course. I, I lecture at the University of this country, or you can contact me. And the next lecture will be devoted to the metric structure of the kinematical space of any arbitrary system, in, in particular for an elementary spinning particle. Thank you very much for your attention.